All of the Lights We Cannot See is an incredibly moving World War II story that is a must-see that comes out November 2nd. Incredible job, gentlemen. Uh, Sean, I think this miniseries proves that you are not limited by any genre. Um, All the Lights We Cannot See is definitely uh, different than your previous work. Um, What was it about the novel that you connected with and that you knew how to approach this project? Well, the truth is that even though I got known for a certain kind of storytelling, I've always wanted to try varying kinds of stories and tones. And uh, and so this was an opportunity to do a historic drama, but I thought that even as it was stretching me into a new direction, different style, different aesthetics, very different approach to production design, cinematography, um, but that it was still at its heart, a character story. And it was still a character story with hope as one of its central themes. And, you know, if you've seen anything I've made, I like to do different tones, sometimes comedy, sometimes action, sometimes genre. But that streak of humanism is really important to me because I want to believe that even in the midst of truly shitty circumstances, uh, there is the possibility of humanity and of connection and that those are make or break values in how we navigate this world. And, uh, and that's ultimately the theme of this piece. Absolutely. Stephen, you were the best of the best. You adapted this this uh, screenplay or this novel into a screenplay by Anthony Dewar. Can you talk about uh, working with him as a collaborator? Did he provide any notes for the script and did you lean on him uh, for insight into the novel? The way that, um, <clears throat> that, that this worked is that it, he and I believe that the text, the novel itself, is the thing it's a, to quote Shakespeare, the play is the thing. This is the the, the thing that need, the object that needs to be interpreted, and so there wasn't a great deal of back and forth between Anthony and myself. Um, it was a handover of the material, and then the important thing for me was that I needed to know the characters he created well enough to be able to set them free to do things that they didn't do in the book so that you can be confident that is what Marie would have done. That is what Werner would have done. And if you if you feel safe in that, then I think you, you are liberated because I think an adaptation shouldn't just be sort of taking the bones from this creature and, and placing it in a different light. It's got, it's got to have its own life, its own energy and its own oxygen. And, you know, the, the biggest... Uh, Taking on something like this is a challenge because, you know, how will people respond, people who love the book? But to be honest, the, the the reaction I was most concerned about was Anthony's. And fortunately, thankfully, he loves it. So there we are. So that makes us happy. It's an absolutely incredible series. Now, uh, this was an extensive casting search for Marie. Aria Mia uh, Loberti, she knocked it out of the park. She is amazing. Um what qualities did she bring to the role of Marie that made her the perfect choice for the role? Wow. Well, yeah, Aria was kind of a miracle of a find. We saw over a thousand auditions, many from people who were uh, low vision or blind. Aria is legally blind, had never acted before, had never even auditioned before. But she's super smart. She has an inner strength that is formidable. She has a a physical quality that kind of jumps off the screen, just luminous eyes. Um, And she knew what she didn't know. And she wanted to learn what she didn't know. And the truth is, whether it's in acting, in journalism, in any line of work, if you start from a place of, okay, I don't know how to do this. I'm telling you up front, I don't know. Help me get great. And that's really a great place to start. And that's exactly how Aria started our relationship. And so it opened up this this corridor of honesty between she and I. And little by little, she learned the job while she was doing the job, uh, which is no small feat. And I agree. I think the performance is incredible. Now, Stephen, at the core of this story, it's really a father-daughter love story between Mark Ruffalo's character, Daniel, and Marie. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, that is the heart of the book. You're dead right. And and it's a relationship. Um, you don't have to have been in a father-daughter relationship to understand love because love is love. But there's a particular sort of 
ordinariness about the exchanges between father and daughter. And it is, you know, you, the thing to remember is that you're joining two characters and they're living their lives. There's not going to be huge amounts of emotion, empathy, sympathy. It's just people living their lives. But what the book gives as an absolute gift is the models that, that, um, that Daniel makes for his daughter to help her navigate her world. So he makes a model of the towns that she's in and she finds her way with her fingers. There could not be a stronger and more poignant um, metaphor for what a pair, not just a father, a parent will do for their child, which is what you're doing is you're trying to teach them how to get around, how to navigate, how to live their lives. Um, and to have that object, which was made by hand by the father, an object of love between two characters who are having an ordinary conversation is an absolute gift for a writer because the work has been done by the carpentry in the model. Absolutely. Now, Sean, I'm sure you're going to get this question a ton, but you shot this in Budapest uh, where a, a country, you were making a series about a country that was get, getting invaded by another country from the East, while an actual country was getting invaded by another country from the East. Uh, you saw this in real time happening on set. Can you talk about that profound experience? Yeah, I mean, when you're making a show about... Uh, the evil that humans can do to each other. And while you're making it, you're seeing an example of that kind of aggression. It's surreal and very, it just kind of hits you hard, particularly with us, because we're filming scenes based in true events where the Germans invaded Paris and in a single day, you have hundreds of thousands. In fact, I think over a million people just walk out on foot. And some of the extras playing Parisian refugees were themselves Ukrainian refugees who had left Kiev and Ukraine due to the invasion. So the way that literally I'm telling this story using people who are living an echo of that history in real time, that was uh, just very impactful and something I'll never forget. Yeah, that, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. I also want to talk real quick about the performance of Hugh Laurie. He's phenomenal. And this is, uh, 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 et, et, I can't say his name. I'm, I'm terrible pronouncing it. Yeah. Uh, what did he bring to the role that wasn't on the page? What do you think is the person who put down everything on the page? Well, no, I mean, when you get a, a, a talent like Hugh Laurie, who um, he will take what you give and then grow it and expand it and make it more and make it him as well. You know, that there are, there are, as with any great actor, there's elements of Etienne that you just know are him. They are authentic. Um, we were very, very pleased that he said yes to this. He also has such a presence, yeah. the voice, the eyes. Plus he committed to this whole look with that beard and all of it. And <clears throat> given that Etienne in the book and the show, is this war hero who has been locked up inside his own trauma since the First World War and slowly comes out of that wound, that shell. I just love taking a powerhouse like Hugh Laurie, but starting him up in a place of fragility and slowly seeing that badass hero and that strength emerge. Yeah, absolutely. I love that line that uh, when you put a lion in a metal box, it's just a box. Uh, I think it's incredible. Look, the miniseries is incredible. It's a must watch. Uh, it comes out this week. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank man. you.